get to see it today. Welcome everybody to the next episode of Michaela's Corner. Hopefully you guys are having a great day today. Happy Sunday. And if you're watching later, hopefully whatever day you're watching, you're having a great day. Just know that I love you, I'm proud of you, and I am excited to get started with this next episode. Today we're going to be talking about what it means to follow Jesus. That it can be really hard, and he asks us to do things that can be really hard sometimes and aren't easy. And then we're going to have a fun craft. I'm not going to give away too much yet, but it is pretty cool. And it's about the ultimate price that Jesus paid so that we can follow him. And our books today are about also following Jesus and what that looks like. So without further ado, and without holding us up any longer, let's get rolling. Welcome to Bible Time. Today we're going to be learning about the cost of following Jesus. We have a story today, but then I've got a little bit of an object lesson for us that involves paper and scissors. And I'm going to see if you guys can figure it out at home, or you can watch me do it and figure it out while I do it. Alright, the idea here is that the cost of following Jesus is not always easy. Sometimes it's really easy to do the right thing, but sometimes it's not. And God asks us to do some really hard things sometimes, and following Jesus means that we have to do the hard things. But don't worry, we don't have to do it alone because Jesus is there to do it with us and the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. So we don't have to do the hard things on our own, but know that you can do the hard things. It may seem impossible at times, but if we just take a moment to think and pray and ask Jesus for help, we can do it. You and I can both do really hard things. So let's learn about what it's like following Jesus and why sometimes it's hard. All right, we're back to Jesus, and he's got his crowds gathering around him. We talked about last week how he's been teaching and doing these miracles. So people have been following Jesus, and he's been gathering more and more people who are following him. And it says, large crowds traveled with Jesus. Many people wanted to follow him. One man said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus told the men, foxes have dens, and birds have skies and nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay down his head. So I think what he's saying is he doesn't have a home. Jesus doesn't have a home. He's just going to keep going wherever he says. But another disciple said, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me bury my father. His father must have passed away, but Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. And I think what Jesus is trying to say here is that it's hard sometimes. He's asking him not to do that. I don't know if Jesus would ask us not to do that nowadays, but when he was like, I have to keep going, man, so if you're going to follow me, you've got to come now. And that's a hard choice between staying behind to bury somebody who had passed away or following Jesus. But he knew that in the long run, Jesus is what matters most. Jesus told the people that following him wouldn't be easy. It would cost them a lot. Anyone who comes to me must be willing to leave his family. You must love me most of all, more than your own life. So he's not saying don't love your family or don't love yourself and treat yourself well or treat your family well or stay with your family. What he's saying is, that we should love him more than those things. So think about that. As much as you love your moms and dads and your brothers and sisters, we're supposed to love Jesus even more than that. Anyone who is unwilling to suffer cannot be my disciple. Jesus urged the people to think about what they were doing. He told them a story. If you wanted to build a tower, you would first sit down and figure out what it would take to complete the tower, right? Otherwise, you would build the foundation and be unable to finish. If you don't plan ahead, you would end up with a big mess, basically, and people would laugh at you. Then he went on to tell them another story. If you were a king, you wouldn't go to war against another king without considering if your army is big enough to win. If you have too men, few men to fight, then you won't be able to win. You don't have to send for more or give up the war. Jesus wanted to take people to consider the cost. If you are not willing to give up everything, then you cannot follow me. Basically what he's saying is, Think ahead. Think about the life that you want to live. If you want to live for Jesus, then you got to follow and do what he asks you to do. And sometimes that can be hard. Jesus said, whoever gives up his life for me will find true life. What good is it to have everything you want in the world if you give up a life with God forever? I think that's really important and key for us to understand is that we can have so many things in this world that we want. I think a lot of times when, when I think about when I was younger, how God wanted me to give up things was sometimes... I would have to share with somebody else. I'd have, when I was playing with somebody else, he asked me to share, or the person would ask to share, and I didn't want to. 
But it doesn't matter because following Jesus and showing Jesus' love to others is what's most important. Or I would want all my toys, all my toys, but then sometimes my parents would be like, you have too many toys, it's time to give some up. And I'd be like, I'm not going to give some of these up, these are mine. But in the end, I had to think more about the bigger picture. There was somebody else who might need those toys more than I did. And I had too many toys and I was barely playing with them anyways. And so I would give them up and we would give them away to people. Sometimes doing the right thing is not easy, but we have to think ahead to what a life that we want Jesus, or a life that we want to live with Jesus, we have to plan for that. And we have to be willing to give up whatever Jesus is asking us to do. And I think it's important what he mentioned at the end there is that we can have all the things in the world but if we don't want to live with God forever, like that can't be the only thing we care about. We have to care about more than just our things. Things aren't bad. It's okay to have nice things. But if that's all we're focused on and we're not focused on Jesus, then it's not really worth having them because in the end, someday we are going to die and we can't take our things with us. So I think it's important for us to remember is that following Jesus isn't always easy. Sometimes it is. It's not always a hard life. But a lot of times Jesus asks us to give up things that we're not comfortable with or to do things that we don't want to do. And sometimes it may seem impossible and hard, but with Jesus, we can do anything. So I was going to show you here. I have this piece of paper. I have it folded in half. But I have a piece of paper here. And how many of you think that I can fit myself through this piece of paper? If I cut a hole in the middle, maybe I could get like a foot through. Then I'm going to show you that it's not impossible. Just like nothing is impossible with Jesus. It may seem hard and I might struggle a little bit to figure this out. I've never done it, so I'm kind of excited to do it with you. It's just a whole bunch of new things that we're doing together. The last couple of videos have all been new things for me. But we're gonna figure out how to get me through this paper and then you at home can try it. It may seem impossible, but I promise, it's not as hard as you think. And with a little instruction, like if we listen to Jesus and follow what he's telling us to do, it might make it a little easier for us. So, this paper, I'm going to fold it in half. Thankfully, I'd already done it, so I've got my crease here. And now what I'm going to do is all I need is this paper and a pair of scissors. I don't need tape, I don't need glue, I don't need more paper. Just this one piece of paper and this pair of scissors. So now that I have it folded in half, I'm going to show you with a marker first because it might be a little tricky for you to see. I'm going to cut this way and this way, but I'm going to cut all the way from the edge to almost the end, but then I'm going to stop. I don't want to go all the way to the end, but then I'm going to cut this way and go all the way and then stop. So see how I'm cutting from this corner to here and from this edge to here, and then we're going to keep going like this, but then stop. Oh. That's supposed to be connected. But stop, and then you go this way, and stop. So you're alternating, means you're changing the way you cut. So we're gonna cut this way first, and then this way, and then this way, and this way. So I'm gonna cut, and I'm gonna speed it up, but you can watch me while I do it. Here we go. Okay. There we go. I did all my cuts. Okay, so now I'm going to try to figure out how to get this back to normal here. I kind of just let it go. As you saw, I was flipping my paper. That made it a lot easier for me to cut. So I'm going to lay them back flat in my lap because the next step we're going to do is we're going to cut all the parts that had an edge where we cut, not the part that was separated. Here, I'll show you in a second. Oh, there we go. I thought that was going to take me forever to fit this back together. Do, do, do. All right, so it's going to be really hard for me to hold it up now that it's all cut up. But basically, I still have my rectangle and my half piece of paper. My paper still folded in half. But now we've got all these lines. So see here, I have, if I start at the top, this part that was separated and this part is the folded part. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the folded part and I'm going to cut along the edge that has the folded part. Except for the first line and the last line. I'm gonna cut the edge except for the first one and the last one. So I'm gonna leave this one whole, but I'm gonna cut this one. So I'm gonna go through here. We don't have that many, so we can do it together. If I can get my scissors in here. Oh boy. We're gonna snip it. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. And I'm going to snip it. And my next one, I'm gonna snip it. And my next one, blah, 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 
snip, but then my last one I'm going to leave whole. So now check it out. Out of that piece of paper, I now have this giant circle of paper. I don't even need to stand up to show you how big this is. Obviously this can go around me. Isn't that cool? What once looked impossible and hard was possible by thinking, stopping, thinking through where I wanted it to go, how I'm gonna get there, and then boom. Don't pull too hard because I just heard something rip. But that's how you can do it. So you can try it at home by folding your paper in half and then cutting lengthwise, but not all the way to the edge. And then when you're done, you cut the part that's folded except for the top and the bottom. You can trick your parents into this one at home. You can say, I challenge you to fit through this piece of paper and then don't tell them how to do it. See if they can come up with it on their own. And then you can do it and show them how it's done. Voila! You can do the hard things. I believe in you and so does God. God is right there by our sides to help us choose those hard decisions sometimes and do what Jesus is asking of us. All right, and with that, let's head on to our craft. Welcome to craft time. Today, these are the things that we are going to use for our craft. We have paint, we have shaving cream, so fun, and I have scissors and paper, and for me, I have two trays here. For you at home, I would just suggest doing this by the sink. Start with a tray, but then I have two trays since I'm not by the sink. The second tray is just ink for somebody who doesn't have a sink. So if you have a sink, I would just do the second part that I'll show you in a second by the sink. So I'm gonna take my tray and I'm gonna set it up here for a second because the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a cross with our paper. Now, I have two papers here, so I thought I would make two crosses. You can make big ones or little ones, but basically what we're gonna do is with our shaving cream and paint, we're gonna make a cool swirled design that we're gonna stick our paper into on top of shaving cream and then we're gonna scrape it off and it'll leave on a cool design. So I'm going to start by creating my crosses. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my paper and then I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna scooch my tray a little bit more. I'm gonna fold it in half like this. And then I'm going to, I'll show you with a pen, the way I'm gonna cut it is, I'm going to cut a line down like this, come a little bit down. Then I'm gonna make a really fat rectangle here like that, and then I'm gonna go really far down like this. So this is where my paper is creased. This is the, the closed part. Over here is where it opens up. So, here we go. I'm gonna cut on these lines, and this is how I'm gonna make my cross. So that way all my sides are even. You don't have to do it this way at home. You can do it however you want. And if you need any help from a parent, that's okay too. This craft is really fun for all ages because I stinking love it because I'll show you in a second. The shaving cream part is pretty awesome. And if you're using washable paint that's not like is okay to get on your hands like I have here, then you can play with this stuff for forever. Okay, the rest of the stuff I'm gonna stick away because we don't need it. But here now I have two crosses because we're talking about doing the hard thing. And even Jesus had to follow what God was asking him to do, which ultimately led him to the cross to die for our sins. So we're gonna decorate some crosses. Now you guys can absolutely do any other shape if you want. You can do the crosses, you can do the cross plus other shapes, but I'm just gonna show you two. So I'm gonna set these to the side because we don't need them right now. I'm gonna put them right over here. And now we're gonna use our tray. And this is where we get to use our shaving cream. So you might want some help with mom and dad on this one. It is clean, it's not gonna hurt you on your skin, but do not put it in your mouth. So don't lick your hands, okay? It kinda looks like whipping cream, but it is not whipping cream. It doesn't go in your mouth. This is just for touching with your hands. And then when you're done, you can wash your hands. But I'm gonna shake it up, and then I'm gonna, whoa. Kinda fill a big portion of my tray. Kind of makes a cool sound. All right, now I'm gonna check to make sure that my cross can lay on top of it, that it's a big enough pile of shaving cream. I think we're good. Actually, I'm gonna make a little bit more on the bottom and a little bit more on the top. I mean, come on. Who doesn't wanna have fun with shaving cream? Get off. 
Kiki, come on. Boop. Well, I'll just, there we go. And look at that. I'll just wipe it around on my hands till it's gone. I'll wash my hands after. All right, let me check again. Bingo, bango, we're golden. Okay, so now's the fun part. Now that we've got our shaving cream, we're gonna take our paints and we're just gonna put blobs of paint on here. I'm gonna do a couple of this color. Again, you guys must get used to my paints by now. Nothing fancy, all right, a little blob there. Oh, look at that, I kinda made it like spraying all over. I'm gonna use all my colors. So next I'm gonna do orange. Gonna shake a little bit there, a little bit there, maybe some over here. Close that back up. I'm gonna get my pink. Ooh, I can tell there's a lot of pink in here, so that's good. Maybe we'll just have globs of pink. One glob. One glob. You guys can choose as many colors as you want at home. One is fun, but you can also do two, three, four, 20. I don't have 20 paints at home. If you do, you could do 20 colors of paint. But you just need enough paint to just kind of cover around the area because then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Now that we have this, we're ready to play. Now I'm using a paintbrush here and I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush like a stick. I didn't find any Q-tips, so if you are at home, you can use Q-tips, toothpicks, you can use a knife, really anything because you're just going to rinse this off and clean it afterwards. So I'm just using this because it's like an easy stick for me to have. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to swirl it around and make designs. So you can do like stripes, see how it's kind of moving around like that? You can make swirls. Now I gotta tell you, it's very fluffy feeling. It feels so good and it smells really clean. I'm gonna go swirls. Okay, and then when you've got it in kind of a good place, I mean, you could, I could do this for forever, but for the sake of the video, we're gonna call this part good. I like the look of my design and now I'm gonna take my cross and I'm gonna stick it in. And now, to save me from getting really messy because I'm not by my sink, I'm just gonna tap on my paper, all the edges, to make sure that all the paper gets covered with the shaving cream and paint. And what this is gonna do is it's kinda create like a, oh, I know that didn't touch, so just keep going until it all touches. It's gonna create a really cool design on our paper. All right, so here we go. I am going to get my other tray. This is what the part you would do at the sink or by your sink counter is. You're gonna take your tray, and here, I'll make it long ways now so you can see it this way. Boop, boop, boop. I'll put my other tray here, move my other cross. I'm gonna now take my cross off, and then I'm gonna scrape using a lid. I don't have like an actual scraper. I'm just gonna use the flat side of a lid that I have at home to scrape off the shaving cream. So I'm gonna pick up my paper, I'm gonna put it on my tray. And see I got paint and shaving cream on my hands? It's okay, I'm just gonna wash my hands when I'm done. And I'm gonna use this to scrape off the shaving cream. But look what's left. Our cool tie-dye with our paint. Get all that shaving cream off. Now if there's a little bit left on, that's okay. It'll dry and then you can kind of wipe it off. It'll get really like crusty, kind of like a like when bubbles dry. And now look at that. I have a super cool tie-dye paint. And now my cross looks super fly, super cool. It's kind of like our milk art, but it's way less um, wet, much easier to dry. And come on, let's be honest, playing with shaving cream is way more fun than, than the milk. So I'm gonna set this one to the side. I'm gonna work on my next one. So I'm gonna swirl my paint again. This time I'm gonna to try to make like lines. We'll see if that'll work. Kind of like stripes, like a tiger stripe. We did this at our preschool by using shaving cream mixed with orange paint and black paint and brown paint to make tiger stripes. And we just made, went back and forth like this, creating this kind of striped look. And then we laid our tiger on top and scraped the shaving cream off and it was so cool. All right, and we're ready. Here we go, I'm gonna take my next piece of paper. And I'm gonna poke it in, remember you want it to touch all the paper. The shaving cream's kinda of funny because it pushes the paper up, so you gotta kinda of push your paper down into it. Make sure it gets all covered. I'm gonna run my finger down the middle to make sure the middles are covered. All right, and then we move it back over to our 
other tray. Lay it down. All right, and I'm gonna scrape with my paint this time to kind of try to see if I can get those striped design. My tray is a little warped, so it's kind of hard for me to get a straight, oop, that's okay. If that happens to you, just go slow. I think I was just rushing it. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. look at that. Now I've got a cool, like, kind of looks like water. I don't know if you can see that there. It kind of has like a wavy design in there. Very cool. Well guys, this is a fun craft to do. And it is not only fun the way it looks, but it's fun for how it touches, because in the end, then you can just kind of swirl in here with your finger. And it's so much fun. It feels so fluffy. It, I love the feeling of this, to be honest. I could play with this all day. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. All you need is shaving cream and some paint. I bet you can also use shaving cream and food coloring, but the food coloring will stain your hands. So if you do that, I would suggest just using a stick to play with the shaving cream, not your actual fingers. And then the end, just make sure you wipe off your hands and wash them so that you get it off because it's like kind of like a soap. But with that, now you have your cool light, or, um, your cool crosses representing the ultimate cost that Jesus paid so that we could go to heaven, so that we could follow him in return. All right, and there you have it. Enjoy. Do the Right Thing by Mike Bernstein. Beartown Park was a popular place and a happy place. It was always full of cubs playing on seesaws and slides, batting a ball around, or just hanging out with his friends. Sister and brother were headed for the park one lazy Saturday afternoon. They had their baseball bats and gloves, and sister had a backpack full of her favorite Berry Buddy dolls. She collected them and hoped her friends would be in the park with their dolls, too. At the park, Sister spotted a group of Berry Buddy collectors and made a beeline for them. Hey, Sister! Someone called from the baseball field. It was Cousin Fred. Come join our game! We need a shortstop! Yeah, said Brother. We need you on our team. Sister! Said the other players, crying, Sister! Sister! Sister liked Berry Buddies, but she liked baseball, too. Besides, she was flattered that everyone wanted her to play. She made up her mind. Baseball it was. Sister played a fine game that afternoon. She made a talented shortstop and made some terrific plays. When the game was over, though, her mind turned to, to thoughts of Berry Buddies. She looked around for her collector friends, but they were gone. She could see them in the distance heading home. Disappointed, Sister turned back to the ball field, but she noticed something lying under a bush. Pushing the leaves aside, she found a berry buddy. It was Chub Cub, a very special doll that was hard to come by. Someone must have lost it, probably Sister's friend Millie, who had a Chub Cub in her collection. Millie would be upset when she found the doll missing. Sister thought of running after her friends, but they were long gone. She looked at little Chub Cub doll. It was adorable. Brother noticed Sister picking up the doll. He wondered what she was up to. Sister, he called, we need to get home for dinner now. Sister didn't know what to do about the lost Chub Cub. It probably belonged to Millie, but she wasn't there and Sister had to go home to dinner. Oh well, she told Chub Cub, I think about that tomorrow. She slipped the doll into her backpack with the rest of her Berry Buddies and joined Brother. After dinner, Sister and Honey played with Berry Buddies in the living room. Brother was reading nearby, and the dolls were having a tea time party to welcome Chub Cub to their group. So nice of you to join us, Chub Cub, Sister said, pretending to be a fuzzy for her favorite. Thanks so much, said Honey, pretending to be Chub Cub. Chub Cub seemed happy in his new home. In fact, Sister was already thinking of him as part of her collection. He fit in so well. Chub Cub, said Brother, looking up. He knew a thing or two about Berry Buddies. I didn't know you had a Chub Cub. I hear they're hard to find. Everyone wants one. Aren't you a lucky one? Hmm, Sister thought. Was she the lucky one? She wondered how Millie would feel about it. It made her a little uncomfortable. Brother, she said, can I ask you a question? Sure, Sis, said Brother, reading. 
suppose someone found something in a park that was very special, said sister. Would it be okay to keep it? Brother looked up, and he looked at sister, and he looked at Chub Cub. I don't think so, said brother. When you find something valuable, like money or jewelry, you're supposed to give it to the lost and found, or to the police or something like that. Then whoever lost it can get it back. Oh, said sister. She looked at Chub Cub and sighed. Brother, said sister. What? asked brother, closing his book. How do you know what's right or what's wrong if you're really not sure? She wondered. You've got to let your conscience be your guide, said brother. My conscience? asked sister. She'd heard about conscience, but wasn't sure what it was. Your conscience. It's a little voice inside your head that tells you to do the right thing, brother exclaimed. The idea of a small voice inside her head seemed weird to sister, and she looked worried. <laughs> Just pretend you've got a little angel sitting on your shoulders, suggested brother. Then when you're not sure about what to do, you can ask the angel, and the angel will whisper the answer in your ear. And sister liked that idea. She imagined an angel in a long yellow nighty sitting on her shoulder, and she thought of a question. What do you think I should do? She asked the angel quietly in her mind. You must do the right thing, the angel answered. Return Chub Cub to his rightful owner. Okay, said Sister Relieved. I will, and I'll always let my conscience be my guide. The next day, Sister returned to the park where she found her friend with her, their berry buddies. Did anyone lose a Chub Cub? She asked, taking it out of her backpack. Oh, my Chub Cub, said Millie. I've been looking for her, at him everywhere. I was so worried. She took the doll and hugged it happily. Then Millie gave Sister a big hug too. Thank you, Sister, she cried. It was so nice of you to bring him back. That made Sister feel good. She had been worried she would be sad about giving up Chub Cub, but she wasn't sad at all. She was happy. Letting her conscience be your guide turned out to be a pretty good deal. Thanks, Sister said to the imaginary angel on her shoulder. No, said Millie overhearing her. Thank you. You're welcome, said Sister with a big smile, and the angel on her shoulder smiled back with pride. The end. God's Very Good Idea A true story about God's delightfully different family. Written by Trillia Newbell and illustrated by Catalina Ecaviri. In the beginning, in fact, before the beginning, God had a very good idea. It was an even better idea than solar panels in 1954, chocolate chip cookies in 1938, the super soaker in 1982, the color TV in 1942, fireworks in 700 BC, the life raft in 1880, roller skates in 1760, and the x-ray machine in 1895. God's idea was to make people, lots of people, lots of different people, who would all enjoy loving him and all enjoy loving each other. They would all be made in his image. They would all be like mirrors reflecting what God is like. Because God is full of love, they would be full of love too. So God got to work. He made a beautiful world for people to live in. Then he made the first people, a man and a woman. And he said to them, be happy, enjoy loving me and loving each other. Have a huge family that will fill the earth and look after the earth and enjoy the earth. God carried on creating people. All of them were made in his image and all of them were different too. Some were men and some were women. Some liked reading and some liked riding bikes. Some had darker skin and some had lighter skin. Some had curly hair and some had straight hair. We live in God's world. We are all different, but we are also all the same. Everyone you see is different than you and the same as you. They might look different or speak different or play different, but they are all made in God's image and so they are all valuable. This is God's very good idea. But 
people ruined God's very good idea. The first people chose not to love God. This is called sin. And because they chose not to love God as they should, they forgot how to love each other as they should. We are all the same. We chose not to love God, and so we are not able to love each other like we should. We sin. Sometimes we treat each other badly because they are different than us. People fight with each other, and people are mean to each other. People laugh at each other. Because we have ruined God's very good idea, he is not pleased with us. Our sin means we can't be friends with him or enjoy living with him. We need God's forgiveness for ruining his very good idea. It's the same for everyone in the world. People who like reading need forgiveness, and people who like riding bikes need forgiveness. People with darker skin need forgiveness, and people with lighter skin need forgiveness. People with curly hair need forgiveness, and people with straight hair need forgiveness. But God was not surprised by people ruining things. He had always had a very good plan to rescue his very good idea. So God got to work. He came to earth as a person. Jesus. Jesus loved people who were different than him. He loved people who no one else loved. Your faith has made you well. I can see. He always enjoyed loving all the different people he met. Jesus shows us how to enjoy loving each other. But people didn't love Jesus. Instead, they hated him. They put him on the cross to die. But this was part of God's plan. On the cross, Jesus took our sins so that we can be forgiven. And Jesus forgives his people for their sins. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose back to life and then went back to live in heaven. And then his peop- then he gave his people his spirit to help them enjoy loving him and loving all the different people they know. Jesus helps us to love each other. One day, God will finish his very good idea. Jesus will come back and make the world perfect again. And anyone who has asked Jesus to forgive them will live there with their different languages, skin, and skin colors. They will enjoy loving God and loving each other. They will enjoy praising God for making, rescuing, and finishing his very good idea. But here's a very, very, very good part of God's very good idea. You don't have to wait till then to enjoy it. Jesus welcomes anyone who asks him to forgive them. And when Jesus welcomes someone, he welcomes them into his family forever. He welcomes people who like reading and people who like riding bikes. He welcomes people with darker skin and people with lighter skin. And he welcomes people with curly hair and people with straight hair. God's family is called the church. Your church friends are your brothers and sisters, your wonderful and colorful church family. You can enjoy loving them and loving God with them. This is God's very good idea. Lots of different people enjoying loving him and loving each other. God made it. People ruined it. He rescued it. And he will finish it. And with your church family, you can enjoy being part of it right now. The end. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was great having you guys. For those of you at Lakeside, love you, miss you. And for those of you who are joining us today that may not go to our church, thanks for joining us. It's so great to have you. I'm happy that you are watching this with us. Just know that I'm proud of you. You've done it through another week and here we are. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you enjoy the beautiful weather and your summer and your time off. And just know that I'm thinking about and praying for you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.